We've all heard the good news from Treasurer Jim Chalmers. It's looking like another surplus and all smiles with high prices for iron ore and coal delivering good economic rosy numbers into the never-never, except for this one thing. It's middle Australia that is really carrying the can with record income tax receipts over the previous quarter and year bringing the government take to record levels. So here to discuss all of this and get the details is business commentator at the Herald Sun, Terry McCran. Terry, thanks so much for coming on the program tonight. Now, these figures were trumpeted as good news by the Treasurer, but I'm not sure that an awful lot of Australians who have seen their personal household income slide backwards the past year would agree. Uh, James, Jim Chalmers is the luckiest treasurer in the entire history of all the fiscal fiends we've had over the, over the decades. He walked in the door and something like $200 billion dropped into his lap. This is the extra revenue that's flowed just in two years. Last year and this current financial year into the budget. A lot of that's coming from households, middle Australia, who are paying much higher taxes. A lot of it's coming from those all those migrants that have flooded into the country and have become tax-paying workers. But the biggest sum, as you've indicated, something like $120 billion extra has come from export earnings from selling iron ore, coal and gas into that global marketplace. So when you get $200 billion, you can, A, a play Santa Claus, They've spent about $50 billion extra in this period, uh, but you also get to bank it and reduce the, reduce the deficit that we had coming out of COVID. So, yes, bottom line, there's all this money, but it's not reflecting real prosperity in the hands of middle Australia, who, as you say, are really starting to hurt given what's happened to interest rates. Well, it seems to me, Terry, that... The government really is, while Jim Chalmers is very, right now very lucky, also ca caught in between a number of dilemmas. I mean, first of all, you've got middle Australia <laughs> that's uh, paying more in tax and paying more in interest rates if they have, a, have a, uh, a mortgage. You've got this immigration situation, which is, of course, driving housing prices further north. And all of this is being underwritten by commodities that many people on the green left side of politics would like to see stay in the ground and make us all poorer. How does Jim Chalmers, who claims that he wants to be a reformer, he had a big piece about modernizing the economy, wind up squaring these circles in the long run? <laughs> well, that's going to be a very interesting question and a very interesting two or three years to watch, James. I mean, the, the, the total insanity of all this is that all our prosperity, all our prosperity rests on those mammoth exports of coal, gas and iron ore into the global marketplace. Yet we've got Chris Bowen's, sorry, we've got Jim Chalmers' cabinet colleague, Chris Bowen, over there in Dubai, begging the rest of the world, demanding the rest of the world to stop buying them, which is just absolutely insane. I mean, it's our prosperity, it's the basis of everything that's happening in the economy and obviously the budget. And on the same, ha same time, the government wants them to end. Uh, it's not a circle that can be sensibly, rationally squared. It's something that has to uh, be play out in real time, I guess. And the reality is that Jim Chalmers will come to love those coal exports and those gas exports. And, Terry, the other issue, too, of course, is that, you know, the GDP may be going up and they're projecting a higher GDP, but on a per capita basis, it's going down. So for ordinary Australians, they're in a recession. We saw those shocking figures the other week on household incomes going backwards by 5.1%, I think it was. Um, Australians are feeling poor, and where is Jim Chalmers going to find the productivity in the economy? Because it's ultimately going to be that productivity that winds up bringing back uh, interest rates back down and rate rising our um, household standards of living again. Where is he going to find that? Absolutely, James. Everything depends on productivity in terms of delivering greater incomes and real incomes to Australians, either higher wages or I incomes from uh, investment. So, it's it, and yet at the same time, again, the way this government does one thing on, on one side and then does exactly the opposite on the other, we saw that IR legislation that, w that was rushed through the Senate 
and then back into the house, which actually is a destroyer of productivity. It's actually going to make life far more difficult for businesses to get that productivity. So this is a government that really has to face up to the realities. Does it really want a prosperous economy? Does it really want to deliver rising living standards to Australians? Or is it going to go, continue to go down these ideological paths, climate change on the one hand, and uh, delivering to the unions, the union mates on the other? Well, yeah, and we don't even have time to get into the union mates who got a bit pretty sweet deal <laughs> on tradies there uh, with immigration in the midst Absolutely. of a housing crisis. But we'll have to save that one for next time. Terry McCran, thank you so much for your time and have a great holiday season.